Good morning. Let's start this morning with prayer. Father, we dedicate this first day of May unto you, Lord, as we meditate on Elipas, Job's response to Elipas. Father, give us insight, Lord, today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's quite cold in Cerritos, California for me. Guy coming from Cambodia, so I'm all dressed up warmly. Well, uh, Job 6, 22 to 30, Job's response to Elipas, part four. Hmm. We're going to focus on the concept innocence. I'm going to just read uh, the commentary. It's on page <clears throat> 221 out of this book. In a summary that introduced the contrasting perspective of innocence between Pastor Pang's Christian viewpoint and Cambodian Buddhist teaching, one would start to explore how Job, in his profound suffering, asserts his innocence and challenges his friends to identify any wrongdoing of his part. What is innocence? You know, when someone says, I'm innocent. You know, what does that mean? In Christianity, the state of innocence is not just about the absence of guilt, but also about the presence of righteous character, as evidenced by Job's claim of untarnished righteousness despite of his trials. So in Christian perspective, when we say that I'm innocent, this means that, oh, I didn't do anything stupid. No, it has to go beyond that. Uh, what have you done right uh, is the issue. But... On the other hand, the Cambodian Buddhist concept of innocence diverged from the from this view, the focusing on the non-duality of actions and their innate nature rather than moral judgment of right and wrong. Innocence in this context is less about adherence to the divine law, more about under but and more about understanding the true nature of self and reality. It's grounded in the principle of karma and anatta. Or the self, non-self, which actions are seen in terms of their skillfulness and suffering they cause to elevate rather than moralistic dichotomy. Wow. Um, so when people, hmm, when we bring this Christian view to Cambodia and said, well, that's not very innocent. No, why? You know, they, they tend to think innocence different. And, and it makes a huge difference when we talk about the gospel. See, the Buddhism teaches that what might be viewed as innocent from a worldly perspective can still be a source of attachment. And therefore, suffering, for instance, the idea of holding on to one's reputation or perceived righteousness could be seen as an attachment that leads to dukkha, the suffering. So even trying to be innocent will lead to suffering. <laughs> so it's a little more complicated, right? Uh, then I was like, oh, just, just believe in Jesus and everything will be fine. Well, but what does that mean to them? Well, let me read the text first from King James. Did I say, bring unto me, this is now Job speaking to Elipah, saying that, really, you accuse me of all this crazy stuff. Okay, well, let me talk. Did I say, bring unto me or give a reward for me of your substance or deliver me from your enemy's hand or redeem me from the hands of the mighty? Teach me, I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. How forcible are right words. Ah, I love this. God, you talk about truism, you know. How forceful are your right words? But what doth your arguing reprove? Do we imagine to reprove words and the speech of one that is this desperate, which are as wind? Yeah, the overwhelm, the fatherless, and he dig pit for your friend. Now therefore be content. Look upon me, for it is evident unto you if I lie. Return, I pray you. Let it not be iniquity. Yeah, return again. My righteousness is in it. Is there any iniquity in my tongue? Can not my taste discern perverse things? Wow. You grieve your friend. He says, did I ask you for a dime? No, he's basically saying that, 
all the all these years I provided for you, all these years I I gave and and I was a living example of what righteousness is. Now you trash talk, you set a trap, and you're gonna. And it, when was the last time you gave me a dime? It's like really, it's like, wow. <laughs> it's like you set a trap. Hmm. So Benson's commentary writes the following. Did I say, or is it because I said, bring unto me, give me something for my support or relief? Is this or what else is reason why you are afraid of me or alienate from me? Did either my former covetousness or my present necessity make me troublesome or chargeable to you or give reward for me of your substance or give me gift for my use or need? Did I send you to come and visit me for this end? Nay, did you not come on your own record? Why then are you unmerciful to me? You might at least have given me com com comfort words, comfortable, comfortable, comfortable words when I expect nothing else from you or deliver me from the enemy's hand by power and the force of your arms as Abraham delivers Lot or redeem me from the hands of the mighty, namelessly, namely by price or ransom. So Benson commentary basically turns the entire scripture into more legible, more understandable. It's not even making a commentary. He's just trying to explain what the verse is saying. He's saying that, am I caught doing wrong? Did I break the law? And then you should have at least given some ransom right, and saved me. But you do, not, you do not have a case. You don't absolutely nothing against me. And why are you still trash talking me, right? So reflecting on Job's assertion, not having sought material assistance from his friends, how does this align with Christian principle found in Acts 20, 35? It is more blessed to give than to receive. How can we apply Job's ind independence and integrity to our own lives, especially when faced with personal challenges? You know, we can go through difficult time in many different aspect of life there's always up and there's down there's up and down in life when we're down then that we become more sympathetic to people who who are <laughs> who had you know tough life and going through some issues in life and then we become more generous we become more understanding I mean, if you ever met someone who never failed in his life and he was always up, 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 good health, good wealth, good popular, and 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 then you you eventually see a monster who we cannot identify with normal people. And to them, it's, it's, they, they were born with diamond spoon and, and lived uh, paved the way paid by the parents and and all that, and they think like, well, this is it. This is how you should live. It does not represent humanity, does it? Wow, that was a good question. What about this? Considering Job's request for correction and the biblical exhortation of Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, as some person sharpens another, how should we seek and accept constructive feedback from our Christian community? What is the role of such accountability in maintaining our personal integrity and innocence before God and others. Now, having said, you know, what Elipa said is like truism, but at the same time, if he said at the right time, with right right attitude, with 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 humility, then he can really become something that uh, give life instead of being dead right. You know, and and so I think the wisdom from this is not what you should never you should never speak truth to friend who's suffering. No, there will come a time that you need to speak truth, and more than speak, you need to live out truth, and so that that person would learn by example. Like wow, so why in a same situation like this, he responds this way, and that is just edifying, right? So that's that's something that I think we could learn from and to mimic. Innocence. Mm. Job says, I am innocent. 
I lived a, a righteous life. I did not betray God's words. I love God all the days of my life. And in the, in the course of just such life, misfortune come, uh, trial comes, Satan's scheme is played out. What do you do about yourself? And what do you do when someone's going through that? Don't become judgmental. Don't start the truth. Don't start speaking the truth in a shallow and uh, un insensitive way because it's going to kill more than help. So, Father, thank you for the wisdom today that we would really live out today as we meet someone who's really, really struggling, Lord, with life issues, Lord, and help them. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, while I'm recording this, um, <laughs> I'm recording this on April 24th, uh, the uh, Trump trials going on, and <laughs> it's so disgusting, and, and I feel like throwing up every time he comes out uh, and says that I am innocent, I am innocent, I have done nothing wrong, it's witch hunt. Well, that's not innocence that Job is talking about. <laughs> Maybe we'll pick it up, pick up on that tomorrow. Lord bless you. See you tomorrow.